Hey guys, so today we're going to start uh, removing components off the front of the frame so I can prep the frame out for the IFS cross member that's going in there. Uh, we're putting in a Mustang 2 front suspension with A-arms, so I have to uh, get some bracketry out of the way and do some, uh, do some cleanup and get the frame ready for welding. So um, I've got the motor test fit in there right now, motor and transmission slung in there and the radiator mounted in place so I could get some idea of uh, where the motor mounts need to go and what my clearances are going to be like and what needs to move. So uh, I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, but I've got a cross member that's got to go. The, the old transmission cross member is keeping the transmission from setting low enough in the frame. Uh, so that's got to go. I was hoping to keep it in there because the more cross members you have in the frame, the more uh, stiffness you have in the frame and uh, less flex. So if, if it was possible to keep that cross member in place, I would have left it. But um, due to the interference problem, it's got to go. So I've got to take a cross member out. I've got to take uh, the old shock mounts off the frame. I've got to remove the uh, leaf spring mounts and the shackle hanger. Uh, off the front of the frame and there's a couple brake line brackets that have to go so uh, all those are riveted on to the frame so the best way I've found to remove these old Ford rivets is with a grinder uh, and a flap wheel a heavy grit flap wheel I usually use a 40 or a 60 grit um, and knock the head of the rivet off pop the bracket off uh, from the frame and then uh, usually you have to grind a little more rivet so take, take the more, more of the rivet off and then knock it out of the frame with a punch. Um, that's usually the, the best way. I've tried drilling them and, you know, a rivet's, rivet is uh, installed hot. So it's hardened and it's tempered when, when it's driven into place and the head is expanded on the rivet. And the problem is that drilling hardened steel with a hand drill is a miserable experience. Um, so it's usually just less frustrating and easier to grind it off. Consumes a little bit more of your uh, consumables, you know, in flap wheels, but saves you a lot of time and frustration trying to drill those things out. Usually you get drilled halfway through it and um, knock your bracket off, and then you still have to grind what's left of the rivet. So you might as well just start off with a grinder and save yourself some time. Uh, so I'm going to going to knock all that stuff off and get the front of this frame prepped. Um, got to remove the, the gearbox, uh, got to remove the steering column, and, uh, and get, uh, get everything ready under there. I've also got to remove the old master cylinder, so I'm going to get to work on that now. This is our Donor 350. I've got it slung in here with the engine hoist. Um, got the T5 bolted up to the back of it. Uh, so the transmission's in place, uh, and just the stripped-down motor. I took all the accessory bracketry off the front, pulled the distributor. You want to make sure when you test fit, you don't have your distributor in here because uh, you're going to be moving this motor around and banging that firewall, and you don't want to don't want to bend the distributor shaft or um, crack a cap or something like that. So I've got that off, uh, and you can see it fits in here pretty well. Motor mounts are going to go right about here on the frame. Um, we're going to have a cross member that goes underneath the motor from side to side and I will build a motor mount off the top of the, the uh, cross member here. Uh, we're going to have our IFS shock tower here uh, or strut tower and uh, control arms will come off below. So I temporarily mounted the radiator uh, just loosely in here so I could check clearances and you can see we're pretty tight. We've got a, a couple inches. The motor's probably going to go back about another inch. I've got uh, maybe two inches at the firewall to the valve cover. And I have to keep room for the distributor. So I don't have much more to go back. I probably can go back about another inch. And there's not going to be enough clearance here for a mechanical fan. Maybe a low profile mechanical fan with no clutch would work. But... Um, and we may go that route. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll either go with a mechanical fan, which, you know, the motor is going to come up a little bit, but I, I, don't, think, I don't think a mechanical is going to work. Um, 
just because of where this radiator is mounted at. So we're going to put probably an electric fan. Got plenty of room here in the front for a pusher electric fan, and that's that's most likely what's going to happen. Uh, so I've got to get this steering box unbolted from the frame today, and we're going to have to modify the steering column for a D-shaft that's going to come down to our rack and pinion. So this is coming off of here today. The uh, master cylinder and the clutch pedal mount are, are coming off the frame today. Um, fortunately, those are all bolted in as opposed to uh, riveted in. So it'll be a little bit less grinding for me. Shock tab or shock mounts are coming off, um, which are riveted here. Brake line mounts are coming off. And all of the leaf spring hangers need to come off. So that's where I'm at. So I guess it's uh, time to get some work done and less talking. So I'm going to put you guys on time lapse so you can watch me yank this motor back out of here and, and get dirty. So uh, I'm going to get to work.
Okay guys, well here's where we uh, leave off for today. Uh, I was able to get the steering gear removed, um, cut the steering column at the base so we can reuse that. Uh, we both want to, uh, both myself and my customer want to keep that steering wheel, stock steering column, steering shaft. So I hacked that off at the top of the gearbox and uh, removed the gearbox, uh, removed the whole front end, the solid axle, uh, straight axle assembly. Uh, it's been removed. Um, we uh, also removed the master cylinder and the associated bracketry, the clutch pedal um, mechanism and the brake pedal mechanism. So uh, that's all stripped out. Frame's good. We, uh, I, I then started removing all the bracketry from the frame that we're not going to need. So uh, shock mounts, uh, uh, brake line mounting tabs, uh, started working on the rear leaf spring hanger brackets and uh, got the rivet heads ground down but they're giving me some trouble so I'm gonna have to beat on them a little bit more and loose, loosen up uh, what's left of those rivets and maybe grind the other head other side of the rivet off so I can uh, hopefully loosen up what's left and drive it out of there um, you saw me using a, a BFH and a chisel or a, a punch to drive out those rivets um, I've tried other things. I've tried air hammers. I tried an air hammer today. I'm not sure if I got footage of that or not uh, to try and get those stubborn ones loose. Um, that doesn't usually work too well for me. Uh, usually just using the, uh, the three pound sledge and the, and the punch works best for driving out what's left of those rivets. Um, I've actually got a few of those here. So as you can see this is all that's remaining of those rivets after grinding them down and punching them out. So we made some good progress today. Um, I've got most of the frame uh, prepped out and ready for the IFS um, and the frame rail boxing. We're going to box in those intersections of frame rail. I think I'm also going to put some speed holes in the, in the boxing plate um, just to make it a little bit more uh, interesting to look at under the under the hood. Uh, I also talked to my client and we uh, figured out what headers we want to go with. He wants to go with the swept back uh, block huggers that I wanted to use so that's awesome. I'm gonna order those up right now. Um, so yeah things went really well today um, other than the fact that uh, that I did an accidental wheelie with the truck. Uh, I got that on video here and I'll show you but uh, you know that that was my mistake for not realizing how heavy that front suspension was and uh, once I removed the front suspension the rear jack stands were not far enough back on the frame uh, to handle that weight transfer so the rear of the truck took over and lifted the uh, lifted the front of the truck fortunately it didn't jump off the stands at me or something it could have been could have been a bad situation um, and I'll have to try to remember that for next time to uh, put those rear jack stands in a little bit better better location further back on the frame uh, but uh, you know those things happen it's not the first time I've had one jump off the stands at me but uh, fortunately fortunately uh, it was it was easily remedied at the time by just jacking up the rear axle and getting the weight back on the front end um, so that's why I did I repositioned the rear jack stands under the axle and let the let the weight of the rear suspension sit on the rear jack stands um, so that the front end shouldn't move around now but uh, you know those things those things happen you just have to roll with it uh, when it when it comes up so that's where we are leaving off for today I I can foresee a lot of a uh, lot more grinding in my future um, you saw me use uh, a few different grinding methods today I, I used a uh, I first tried going at it with a cutoff wheel and just cutting the head of the rivet off and then grinding flush. Um, that works okay. The problem is that you really tear up the base materials. So I want to save these brackets and uh, hopefully, you know, they can go on to somebody else's project that needs uh, somebody that needs leaf spring hangers or uh, shock mounts or something. Uh, you know, original parts from a 48. So I didn't want to damage them and using a, a cutoff wheel or an abrasive uh, grinding wheel. Um, tends to damage the base material pretty bad. What I love about the flap discs is that they take off a good amount of material, they're quiet, 
and uh, you know relatively quiet as opposed to a grinding disc. Uh, they don't jump around on you like a grinding wheel can, and uh, they, and they leave a nice smooth finish. You know, once you get comfortable with them and familiar with how to use one of those, um, as you can see from the finished product, uh, they leave a really nice bare metal finish. You don't take off too much base material. You just grind out the material that you want to grind, and um, so I'm going to keep doing it that way. Uh, over the years I've found that's just the easiest way for me to handle those rivets. Uh, so I guess that's pretty much it for today. Um, we'll be doing a little bit more grinding tomorrow. We've got to get, i got to get that transmission cross member out. i got to get these uh, rear leaf spring hangers out. And, um, and then I can start prepping out the frame, cleaning. i got to clean up the greasy sections of the frame that have brake fluid and oil and stuff from over the years. It's not too bad. The frame's pretty clean. So whoever had the truck before... Uh, you know, kept it clean under the hood and kept the frame clean, which is nice. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to strip it down um, a little bit. Uh, I I ground down um, some of the painted sections to see what it looked like underneath the frame, make sure there wasn't any rust under that paint, and uh, there's not. The frame's really clean underneath, so that's a good thing. So I don't have too much rust to deal with. Um, I've just got to uh, strip down the sections I'm going to work with, wire wheel the rest of it, and then um, do my finish welding and uh, some cleanup after that and paint it. So uh, pretty happy with that. Not a lot of work gonna, is going to go into those frame rails. Um, so that's where we are today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you uh, like what you see, please uh, click like and subscribe. Um, I could use the, use the likes. So thanks a lot.